there? Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king! Bernarda, she. You come most carefully upon your hour. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francesca. For this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold, and I'm sick at heart. Have you had quiet guard? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho, who is there? Friends to this ground. And liegemen to the Dane. Give you good night. Farewell, honest soldier, who hath relieved thee. Bernarda has my place. Give you good night. <laughs> Hola, Bernarda. Say, what? Is Horatio there? A piece of her. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What, has this thing again appeared tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy and will not let belief take hold of her, touching this dread sight twice seen of us. Tush, tush, will not appear. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story, what you two knights have seen. Well, sit we down and let us hear Bernardo speak of it. <clears throat> Last night of all, when yon same star that's worse from the pole, had made his course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns. Marcellus and myself, the bell, then beating one. Peace, break thee off. Here it comes again. In the same figure, like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar, question it, Horatio. Looks it not like the king? Mark it, Horatio. Most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. But would we spoke to? Question it, Horatio. What art thou, that you serve this time of night together in that fair and warlike form that his majesty of Denmark did sometimes march? Speak! By heaven I charge thee, speak! It is offended! See? It stalks away! Stay! Stay and speak! Tis gone, and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you on it? Before my God, I would not disbelieve without the true and sensible avouch of mine own eyes. Does it not look like the king? As thou art to thyself. Such was the very armor he had on when he the ambitious Norway combated. Tis strange. Twice before, with martial stock, he hath gone by our watch. I think it be no other, but e'en so. Well may it sort that this portentous figure comes armed to our watch, so like the king that was. A mote it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell. The grave stood tenantless, and the sheet of dead did gibber and squeak in the Roman streets. Soft, lo where it comes again. Across it, though it blasts me. Stay, Lucian! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there is any good thing to be done, the might to thee do ease and race to me, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's faith, and happily foreknowing may avoid, oh, speak! I charge thee, speak! Stop it, Marcellus! Shall I strike at it with my partisan? Do it, it will not stand! Oh. Tis here! Tis here! Tis gone! We do it wrong, being so majestical to offer it a show of violence, for it is as the air invulnerable in our vain blows malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew, and then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. It vanished at the crowing of the cock. But look! The morn and rustle mantle cloud walks over the dew of yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For by my life, this spirit done to us will speak to him. Do you agree we shall acquaint him with it as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? Let's do it, I pray. And I, this morning, know where we shall find him most conveniently. 